Morning folks, just a quick video this morning, last one, video four, unless anybody needs me to answer anything in detail um, after you've looked at this video, you should be able to have it transferred onto your sat nav and be able to follow the route that you've planned on base camp. So you've planned your route on base camp and you've zoomed right in and you've made sure all your shaping points are in the right place and the map is now pristine and ready to be transferred over to your sat nav. First thing you're going to need to do is you need to go to rename the route. You've you've already named it up in the my collection, which is the this is the base camp side if you like. This is your sat nav side. So whatever's in this box here is the bit that's going to be transferred to your sat nav. All this is already in, this is just in base camp. So you've already renamed this island. I've I've done an island one basically just to show you. So I've I've named it island. I've drawn my route. I've made sure everything's in the right place um, by clicking on here. I've got a start point, a load of won't alert shaping points, I've got my dinner here which is an alerting one and then I've got my end point here, that's all I've got, three points that are going to be alerting throughout the day hopefully. Um, I've checked my mileage, 124 miles and I've checked my time, 2 hours 41. The time will always change due to reasons unbeknown to me, um, it's something to do with average speeds on the sat nav you can't change them whereas you can on base camp so you could manipulate it and get it near enough but basically it is an ETA it's an estimated time of arrival so you're never going to be sat at the speed limits of the road constantly you're going to get stuck in traffic and so on so I won't take too much notice on the time but the mileage should definitely never change if you've done it right because that's the whole point of, of doing all these videos is to make sure that when you're mapping a route the mileage that you've got on here is the mileage that you're going to be doing on the actual day especially if you're doing big days I mean our first day in Switzerland is something ridiculous um, what is it it's 456 mile in the day so you don't want to be loading it over and then realizing that it's actually about 550 miles so I've, I've been over and checked it all so anyway we've checked that we've done it all we need to label this side so you right click and you rename it whatever you want to name it in your sat nav. This is what it's going to come up as in your sat nav. Okay. So once you've named it, you can then transfer it to your sat nav. And the way you do that is you go back up to the My Collection here and you right click and you go Send To. Now when your sat nav is plugged in to your computer, it'll come up down here under all, under all the stuff that's in the My Collection. So it'll come up down here, zoom or whatever, and you'll have something called internal storage. Click on internal storage and then your OK box will become live. Left click on your OK box and that will send it to your sat nav. You'll know when it's been sent over because in this dialog box here you will have a, um, your sat nav will come up just underneath all this, all this stuff here. Uh, and it'll come up with a green tick next to the, it'll say Zumo 590 or whatever sat nav you've got and once it's been successfully transferred you'll have a green tick in a box or you'll have a tick in a green in a green round box should I say I've not plugged it in to show you that because I need my sat nav obviously to um, show you the route and everything on it and it takes a while to find the satellites indoors so I've made it so it can find the satellites easier for me so anyway, once we've transferred it over to the sat nav, you then need to go onto your sat nav to have a look at it where it is on here. So when you when you unplug your sat nav, it'll come up on the screen, new in, new data, import now, yes or no. Obviously you want to click yes and that then you click the, the it'll bring up all the routes that you've imported in a list. Usually I just click the select all button at the top and that will that will download all the routes onto your sat nav. At this point it has only downloaded them, it's not actually calculated any routes. So when you go into on the um on the new sat navs, the five uh, sorry, the three fifty, the three ninety and the five ninety zoomos, it's in apps. It's apps and trip planner. And then all your routes come up here. In the older sat navs, I think, if I'm right in remembering, it's where to and then custom routes or it might be settings and custom routes because there is no apps function so you're looking for customs route, custom routes in the older sat nav in the newer sat navs you're looking for trip planner so we go into apps and we go into trip planner and then we click on the route that we want so I'm going to click on island you have got 
your three points your start point your dinner and your end point none of the other points are in even though we've got say 100 shaping points or whatever they're not going to be showed on here so the only three things that are going to ping up is your start your middle and your end um, and any others that you've had in as as alerting ones your time and your distance they might change in a minute because at the minute as I said it's only downloaded this map or this route onto your sat nav it's not actually calculated it till you click go so once we've clicked go it then asks you where you want to go to so if you're already at the start of the route then that's fine but usually you're going to want to go to the start of the route you're not going to go on to your dinner point straight away and you don't want to go to end so you're better off going to your start point because obviously that's what you're wanting to do you want to start at the start of the route so it doesn't matter where you are in the country or how far you are away from your start point if you st select your start point that will then calculate two routes one the fastest way to get you from where you are to the start of the route that you've planned and then the second route it calculates will be the route that you've planned and that shouldn't change so the first one will be an a to b route if you like a fast route and then the second route will be your manipulated route so we're going to go okay and that's calculating the route now so that's calculating two routes as i say your a to b to get there and then your actual route once you're there um, which will be that route so as you can see at the minute I'm here so it's calculated the one route to get to the start and then the next route so we click start and it's telling me it's 586 miles right well that's 586 miles for the total route including the 124 that's already on here and the way that we check it to sit make sure it's right is we click the top box here and we can see at the top it is 584 miles 14 hours 28 the first leg is 461 miles I don't take too much time on I don't take too much notice on the time on the time scale because you're gonna have stops and what you're never gonna do 11 hour 42 in a straight run anyway so so I'm gonna scroll through all these until I get to the end of this first part of the route and it'll come up with a break in here you'll know when you hit it you know when you get to it no I don't want to recalculate So we'll keep scrolling down until we find, there we are. So that's arrive at the start point, basically. And then you've got two routes here now. As I say, you've got your morning route to your dinner, which is what this one is, drive to Letterkenny, because Letterkenny is our dinner stop. And then your second route is your afternoon route from dinner to your end. So this is the ones where you want to be adding your mileage up to make sure that it's bang on. So we've got 69 miles to dinner. So we do we do 69 miles and we keep scrolling down till we find the afternoon stop, which is this one here, because that's to your dinner, and then your afternoon to your end is another 55 miles. So you add the 69 miles and the 55 miles together, and if we're right, we should come up with 124, which 69 and 55 is. And you have a look on here, and we've got 124 down in the bottom there. So we know it's right. Time wise, it's saying on the computer 2 hours 41. We've got an hour and 12 there, and we've got an hour and 33 there, so an hour and 12. So that's 143, 145, 245. So it's actually 4 minutes out, so it's not bad at that. Um, so we know that we're right at that, we're, we're bang on. Um, the the mileage is exact um, and the time isn't far off at all so it's the mileage one that you're looking for if, if your mileage is wrong then the chances are that it's not the sat nav that's calculated it wrong there's one of your shaping points that are out here um, or your preferences and whatnot your sat nav's not set up to set up to base camp 100% um, which is in the first video which is probably the more likely case to be fair rather than a routing point because it doesn't matter where your routing points are or your shaping points are um, your sat nav should follow it any regardless um, so it'll just add more time to the route so the chances are it's going to be a preference in your in your settings that's wrong if you if you find that your route 
distance isn't bang on 124 or whatever it is on base cam. So that's it really. Um, it's transferred over. It's over the 50 miles um, that some some people were saying that it's uh, it was recalculating and it couldn't avoid motorways after 50 miles. I've never heard of that. If you put enough shaping points in a route, it doesn't matter how many miles it is. With enough shaping points in a route, then you're forcing you're forcing the um, one you're forcing Garmin Base Camp to take that road, but also you're forcing forcing your sat nav to take that road as well. So the idea is is to make sure that you've got plenty of shaping points in there, and it will follow it. But as I say, if you've got um, if you've got a fluctuation in your mileage down here compared to the mileage that's on your sat nav when it gets loaded after you've clicked the go button and it's totally calculated it and it's ready to ride um, then you've got an issue somewhere in your preferences I would say so that's it for me I hope you've found that you can now map a simple route on base camp or, or in fact a complicated one because it's it's only the length of the route obviously the longer the route the longer it's going to take you to produce it and to make sure it's right but you're better off spending an hour sat at your computer in the warmth and the dry than you are spending an hour trying to piss about on your sat nav when you're sat at the cold and wet at the side of the road wondering where your hotel is that night because your sat nav's going haywire and it, and it doesn't know where it's going. Um, it's all to do with the shaping points. If you need any info on anything else, just give us a shout either on YouTube, which I don't go on very often. I will be I will be honest with you, but it does ping up when I get a notification, so I will see it. Um, but I have only done literally these four videos on YouTube ever, um, and it, I've simply done it because I was struggling when I first started using Basecamp coming from Tight Travel Software. Um, it is a complex piece of software. One, because it doesn't just do motorbikes, it does walking and everything else, so that's that's why you've got to set your preferences up to start with. But once you've figured it out, and hopefully now you're using the my the new route tool, um, rather than these adventures and trip planners at the top, you should have you should have found it easy to start you should have found it easy to map a route. So anyway, I shall speak to you soon maybe. If not I hope you've enjoyed it, found it useful and happy travelling. Cheers.